What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of an update on the 300 gallon reef. I'm gonna talk about my preparation for the Walt Disney that I'll be adding here soon. Also the race to the top of the tank and just some general updates on how the system is doing, cutting coral within it, fragging them out, all that good stuff. You guys see here the frag tank. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when it comes to preparing for the Walt Disney, I've decided I was going to remove uh, this uh, Fish of Hex Millie colony since I already have one up here, which is kind of my main colony. I've just been fragging this one uh, for a while to put uh, frags on the website. Now, I decided to go ahead and start cutting it. It's gonna be difficult to tell and probably the fish are gonna be in the way, but you can see I've already started to, get my finger there, uh, cut off some pretty decent chunks and they're currently in the frag tank healing. And you guys can see that this millipora down here is starting to come up and get up underneath that acro anyway, so it's a good thing that I'm starting to remove it. Now, I'm gonna take about a month or so to completely remove this colony, and then once I get down to the base, I'll go ahead and kind of scrape it off with my bone cutters to make sure that it doesn't continue to encrust and grow in another direction. So uh, once that colony is completely gone, I will have the Walt Disney frag that will uh, go in its place, the exact same spot, and then hopefully grow outward over to the left hand side and back where it will uh, be just a really good piece to have in the tank. Of course, once it uh, completely grows out and looks decent, I'll start fragging it and putting it up on the website just like everything else that we have uh, here in the 300 gallon. So within the next 30 days or so, that colony will be completely gone. So look forward to having a lot of that on the website. Of course, I need to give it at least two to three weeks per frag for it to heal before I feel comfortable enough to go ahead and uh, ship it out. Now, over here to the uh, center right rock structure, we have the race to the top of the tank. And um, I think, I, I think what, four months ago, the fish went ahead and knocked off a huge chunk of this green acro or this green staghorn. And uh, it would have been at the top by now. I think I posted a picture on Instagram. I'll have to check and see exactly which one it was. It's either that one or the darker green one, which is in the front. But either way, uh, the race to the top is kind of underway here. We have the uh, uh, the purple stag here. It's more of a blue in real life. Kind of looks purple on the uh, filter here. And then, of course, the fish effects Millie. I definitely think it's between uh, this guy and the uh, green staghorn. And obviously, the green staghorn seems to be pulling ahead. Now, they're getting about 750 par right there. And, of course, once they get up to the top, they're going to be closer to that 1,000 range. So I'm going to wait till it starts actually coming out of the tank to see... Um, how it reacts to that kind of light before I cut it down uh, just enough to let it to continue to grow. But it's pretty crazy if you think that that's a 31-inch uh, tall tank and it's just, of course, the rock structures are kind of up pretty high, but that's definitely a, quite a bit of growth in such a short period of time for this system. Now, as you guys can see, I went ahead and added this frag rack. Um, not something that I like. I hate that it's, it's in here. It looks like crap. I mean, it's just... Ugh. It's not fun, I don't like it, but unfortunately, the uh, frag tank is pretty much full. Um, you know, the stuff over to the right hand side is what's healing, and then once it's healed, it comes over here on this rack down at the bottom, you guys can probably barely see. I take pictures of it, and then I go ahead and put it in the numbered section here. Um, definitely looking to add another frag tank to the 300, just because it is pretty uh, pretty full, and to be honest with you, I'm coming in here every few days and cutting the tank just to keep the corals happy. Um, I know it's na it's natural for them to come together and kind of have their little coral war and, and see whoever the biggest, baddest wins and keeps going, but I don't like that. When I see coral and acropora touching each other, I just see money being flushed down the drain. So I like to come in here and kind of snip them. Um, you can probably see it's like dark finger day right here between these two acros. It's, I, got, I got there too late. They pretty much kind of infuse together and continue to grow. But, you know, I'll come down here and, and uh, knock out a piece of that before he touches that acropora. So, I mean, I just come in here, see what's close together. And I, as you guys can see down here, the fish do a lot of fragging for me too. That rainbow, uh, granulosa, yep. Got to come in here and grab him at the end of the video. Frag him up, heal him, and then... You know, it's good to go. So the fish do a lot of fragging for me, which is pretty awesome. Um, they usually frag stuff that I don't really necessarily want to break, but it's just kind of part of the whole process. Uh, one coral that I'm definitely regretting putting in here now is this pink bird's nest. As you can see, there, it's kind of in between the gap of these two rock structures, and I call it the, uh, the fish killer. I've really messed up a lot of fish with this. Um, actually, one of these black chromuses, which you can probably barely see in the video, um, got slammed in the eye. My phone's buzzing got hit in the eye. I actually saw it happen when I was feeding him. He got scared. He ran right into it and it swelled up 
it was just nasty. So I'm probably going to come in here and rip that whole colony out and this other colony of a different type of pink bird's nest. That's just, I don't know, it just, I don't know. It looks weird. I don't like the way it's growing. So I'm probably gonna pull that out too. Um, pink bird's nest is cool, but as you, as you guys can see, it's kind of like flowing to the right hand side. Not a fan of that. So it's just one of those things I gotta get in there and do it, cut it out and then uh, frag it up, of course. Um, but yeah, overall, the tank is doing very well. I'm, I'm at about 2.8 gallons per hour of the uh, calcium reactor dosing. You guys know know that I actually um, got rid of the Camor dosing pump. Um, a local hobbyist ended up uh, picking it up for me. And uh, it just wasn't enough. It, did, it didn't dose fast enough for me. So I'm kind of back to the uh, needle valve. Now what I'm planning on doing is adding a DC, a controllable DC pump as the uh, feed pump for that calcium reactor and then just opening up the valve all the way so I don't have to worry about it clogging and then dialing the flow in based off the percentage of the pump speed. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, I know a couple of local hobbyists that do that when they have big Acropora tanks and they find that that's more uh, safe, less chances of the valve clogging up because essentially it's not really there, it's just the pump. You just gotta keep the pump clean every six months, go in there and do your normal paint pump maintenance. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, if you go away for a week and the, and the valve gets clogged, you don't have to worry about uh, alkalinity plummeting because that's one thing with this tank that uh, if I don't, I have to test alkalinity every three days now, make adjustments you know, because the uh, it doesn't take much for it to plummet. I'm sitting at 8.5 and I can't, I, I for, a, for a very short period of time, I got it back up to nine, but it was just, it felt like the tank didn't like that adjustment. So I'm, I'm just keeping it at about 8.5 and slowly getting my way up to 9.5. And again, once you go through those different ranges of alkalinity, you have to keep an eye on your nutrients. So you gotta make sure that your NO3 and your PO4 are in a good range before you start going out to those higher alkalinity levels because you'll stress the coral out and kill them. So it's just a, it's just a battle that I, with this tank at this point, if it's happy at 8.5, if things are growing, it's doing well, the nutrients are under control, the fish are happy and healthy, I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna let it do its thing and then of course frag it and continue to pay for the hobby or pay for the tank and the salt and all that stuff through the coral sales. And uh, yeah, really love the tank, it's doing great. Um, what else can I say? The lighting, let's see, you guys know, if you've been following the build, you know it's here, but I'll just show you anyways, it's gonna be blue. We have the eight XR15s and the four T5 bulbs, which I'm gonna be changing out in the next uh, month or so. We have two Actinics and two Blue Plus per, um, are those uh, Aquatic Life 48 inch uh, retrofit kits. So it's pretty cool, really like it, and uh, happy with this setup overall. Now, if you guys have any questions about this, let me know. If you wanna know about a specific coral or you're interested in getting a specific frag from this, because I get emails, people saying, hey, um, it was kind of, it's interesting when people take screenshots of the tank and then they just start circling colonies that they want a frag of. If there's something that you want in this tank, feel free to let me know, because there's probably a 99% chance that I already have it fragged and it's currently healing up. So it's something that I can set aside for you. I have no problem doing that. Uh, so just let me know. All right. Well, that's about it for this video. Um, I'm looking to get three videos out this week. I know Scott from Rascal's Reef is going to be over here on Friday to help me cut up a big coral shipment that I'm getting in actually tomorrow. Tomorrow or Wednesday is going to be here. And of course, I'm going to give us some time in the tank before we start cutting it. And I just added about 90 frags to the website this morning. It's just a lot of work and we'll get into that whole process if you guys really wanna know kind of how I prepare coral, take the pictures, get them on the website, kind of the overall process because it's a lot more in depth than it was just a year ago. I made a lot of changes over the last four or five months and of course uh, there's been really good results so I'm just gonna keep doing, doing that stuff. So that's about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you later. Peace.